Hey everyone, we're back at it with another one. This one's a little bit different. This is the evening, evening. It's not exactly evening, Star Boot Company. It's like evening with an N at the end of it. It's in the title, obviously. But uh, they're apparently a dance uh, boot maker. Custom dance boot maker, in other words. Um, so we're gonna be resoling these because they're a little bit different. They've got a suede bottom on them, and I'll be able to cover what's up with uh, having suede soles versus a regular leather sole. And they're very cool because they've got a, um, a deer or elk upper, deer upper, sorry, and an elk bottom on these. Almost mixed them up and everything. And they're a custom boot, so let's see what they're all about on the inside. And from what I understand, this company might not even be really around or making boots anymore as far as custom ordered ones like this. So it'll be definitely something that we'd love to see what's going on inside of So come join us and check it out. So that was probably the weirdest in intro possibly and everything that I've had just because I'm not too familiar with this brand and we're trying to kind of figure it out as we're going I guess you can say but uh, from the look of it on these boots on, on the site it looks like the site is still up for them I'll leave a link in the description for them but uh, it looks like they've done like dance boots for cheerleaders and stuff and um, with these boots also they're technically designed for dancing just because they do have a suede bottom now what are the benefits of having a suede sole versus a standard leather sole or a rubber sole definitely not durability and definitely not traction it's all about being able to slide a little bit more certain types of dances you got to be able to slide and spin a little more freely and easily so that's where a suede leather sole comes into play sometimes there are synthetic ones out there too uh, like uh, I believe it was like Tango uh, Dance and uh, a few other ones too where they need suede bottoms but suede bottoms can get a little pricey sometimes so they've started making more synthetics as well and uh, that's kind of a fairly common thing going around these days we used to get a lot more dance shoes in but these days they're making them so cheap in other words that repairing them isn't really worth it unless they're a really high-end one and it's funny just because some cobblers you tell them like oh yeah I'm just selling a pair of dance shoes their th immediate thought is that they're expensive which they used to be back in the day but these days unfortunately companies have found uh, different alternatives that are much cheaper and everything and so they don't exactly make them worth resoling. Now, as far as what I'm doing, I'm trying to separate the welt from the upper, but it looks like I may have to use a little bit of solvent to kind of uncure it. I'm trying to separate the sole so I can wedge the knife under just because the suede leather is so soft that it's, uh, it's not wanting to cooperate with me. So I have to be a little gentle here. Not too gentle, I guess, but semi-gentle at the same time, and uh, get some solvent on there to deactivate the adhesive. I'm trying to minimize getting it on the upper, but sometimes you can't do anything about that. That's why at the end we always clean them up at least a little bit and buff them over and everything. Oh yeah, that split it much better. Might not even need to use the heel pry to split it completely probably go sharpen this knife up be a lot safer sharp knives are very important and safe how to sharpen up the knife real quickly having a sharp knife definitely very important doesn't matter what you're doing it's uh there's a lot of old sayings about having a sharpened axe or a knife um who was it uh i'll be honest i can't remember which president it was it was i believe it was george washington talked about uh having to chop down 
tree. He would spend the first few hours chopping down the tree. Now, I don't remember the exact saying, but I should probably look it up just for you guys. Give me a sec. All right, so it shows my intelligence of being able to remember things. Unfortunately, my wife says I have a goldfish memory, but it was actually Abraham Lincoln. Um, I was wondering if it was Abraham Lincoln or George Washington. I know George Washington had that whole tree thing, but Abraham Lincoln said, if I only had an hour to chop down a tree, I would spend the first 45 minutes sharpening my axe. So definitely have to make sure everything's sharpened, whether you have a kitchen knife or a knife for um, cutting soles off, or if you have an axe to chop a tree, kind of applies to everything. But anyways, like I was saying, especially for a lot of you DIYers out there, or people who are starting out, it's kind of a good analogy to think about that if you're going to try something yourself, you're going to spend a fair amount of time first practicing or experimenting, uh, studying it and everything. You can't just you can't just jump into it sometimes. I've I've had some DIY jobs come in where constant interruptions. But yeah, some of them DIY jobs I have coming through here where people attempt something ends up costing the individual more for us to fix it because ninety percent of the time there's additional damage that was created by the the owner of the boots or shoes so yeah definitely um diying is uh it's an option if you want to try your hand at being a cobbler go for it but just bear that in mind that 90 percent of the time if you screw it up it's going to cost you more so if you're fine with that and it's not just through us it's basically every cobbler uh worldwide we have cobbler groups that we talk with other cobblers through and everything and they post pictures yes we do post pictures and kind of make fun of some of the some of the weird stuff that we get in and ridiculousness and everything and we're not making fun of the individual it's just the the funny funny stuff that some people pull off so anyways back to these boots here so we've taken these apart obviously you can see what's going on here but there are two layers of suede usually the suede leather is kind of on the thinner side it's not very thick so you actually have to double layer it triple quadruple whatever you want to do um, they make them this thin always uh, just because majority of the shoes that these are going on are kind of a low profile high heel type of ladies shoe but for a western boot you definitely want something a little heftier so you have to double layer it in other words now as far as the filler in here it is a foam it's definitely one of those higher high density type of foams that is supposed to last a good while but still once uh, once it collapses in some areas it kind of gives out it looks like it's still been holding up pretty all right I did slice through it a little bit um, to remove the sole and everything but we're gonna be putting cork anyways in here this stuff isn't isn't the best I mean it's it's better than some things I've seen out there but it still isn't the best uh, it does have a shank in here with this uh, fiberboard covering it and everything plastic heel rand and everything leather welts that's always a good thing um, especially we see a lot of boots and shoes around these days with those plastic ones uh, and the plastic welts at this point I've gotten to that gotten to that point where I've had it if you've got plastic welts on your boots or shoes we're not resoling them unless we're re-welting them it's, uh, it's way too much of a hassle and unfortunately we can't charge extra um, on something that's a hassle like that it's just not practical so at this point we're just saying no more uh, no more plastic welts of boots or shoes unless unless the idea is that you are going to replace that welt and we'll put a nice leather one on there too leather is a lot a lot better for lasting with the plastic ones the problem is that they tend to crack especially in these areas here where the where the toe bends leather doesn't really crack as easily in those areas it takes years and a lot of damage and abuse that'll get damaged and crack but the plastic ones end up just cracked or worn down so much at the toe areas that when it comes to stitching on that midsole or sole it's it's just a horrible horrible nightmare so no more I'm not doing that again get these nails out all right 
so it's going to take a little bit of prying. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these uh, nails that I just hammered down out. Looks like there's only five nails holding it in, which isn't bad. Sometimes you'll see more, sometimes less. Even less is worse. Five is kind of like a minimum, in other words, that you have to have. You need two towards the front, two on the sides here, and one in the very back. Those are your gripper nails that hold the heel block on, which I just popped off. The heel block, which is that right there in from the inside and it's definitely very important to make sure that's nicely secured so i'll get these nails out and uh, take apart the other boot and we'll continue on all right our own so it turns out that uh, the welt was coming apart in one of the areas here and we're not replacing the welt on these boots um we're just doing a resole on them and i don't think the customer wants a whole welt replacement or anything on these quite yet maybe next go around or something but uh, the welt is still intact, te technically it's just the stitching wasn't doing too well in this area here. And I didn't cut through it, I know for a fact, it's just those few weak spots and everything here. And the stitching just started kind of unraveling in some areas, and so now I've got to restitch the welt. This kind of gives you an idea of what the process is like, so it's just like stitching our new welt on except I have to be a little more cautious and go through additional process in other words of finding where the holes are and definitely not creating new ones and I have to make sure to find the holes that are going through the welt because I'm also simultaneously keeping an eye out for the holes that are for the sole itself not just the welt it's a lot of it there but this at least gives you an idea of what happens you know sometimes if the welt is coming undone in some areas we have to restitch it not always that we have to replace the entire welt but just to repair is all that's needed where i have come across some welt damages that were done well that were repaired by other cobblers or even DIY because if the welt comes undone along with the sole somebody's trying to right away put a bunch of glue in there and some shops do that as well and even if they're replacing the sole they don't feel like stitching it. Stitching takes a little too much time and obviously it's not something they could just call the customer and charge immediately and everything but it's kind of, it's honestly simple, it's a very simple repair, but what can you do about laziness sometimes? Some guys are lazier than others and just dump a bunch of super glue in. And we'll do everything we can if we spot something like that, like this, we're going to repair it. But if the welt is way too chewed up, or if there was a bunch of super glue from a previous cobbler, you would probably have to call the customer and say, hey, we can have no choice. We can either do a refund for you or it's going to cost this much extra. Whether it's a welt replacement or in some cases I've had not just a welt replacement but the entire footbed too. Now with these boots here, they do have a leather footbed here on them. At least, no, it might be a fiberboard. It is a fiberboard. But it also has a gimme. You can see that felt material there. That's got glue on it. That's the gimming. That's what kind of holds everything to the footbed, in other words. And so, they're not a hand welted style. Hand welted means that the, the welt is stitched through the actual footbed, but the gimming acts as a buffer, in other words, that goes kind of in between the footbed attachment point and the upper and welt area.
All right, everyone. So Marcus did the uh, final touches on taking care of those leather uppers and everything on them. So that was kind of an interesting one just because I haven't worked on this uh, brand of boot before and everything. And it's always interesting to see the different type of stuff. But these, obviously, with that suede leather sole we've got on there, it's going to be a lot better for dancing. I still use a rubber heel on it to help with the stopping and everything during the dancing. If, uh, if a suede heel is needed, usually we still have to have some kind of thickness put on there. We could either use a little more leather and then put a suede over top of that. But the suede materials, as you can tell, obviously are a little bit on the thinner side. So they do have a tendency to technically wear out quicker but you'd be surprised that the suede leather actually is fairly durable actually um i would i would say that these two layers that we have on here for the sole is probably a little bit more durable than regular regular smooth leather well no i'd say maybe about the same actually that's the same thickness i would say it's about the same durability um not quite more durable but uh Definitely not as durable as a rubber would be, uh, obviously, but you can't dance with rubber too easily. So, um, if you had seen with the stitching that we did and everything, now these are usually not channeled because uh, the sole is only so thick, in, our, in other words, and we've got two layers, we don't want to cut right through it. I did drop the blade down on my stitcher just a little bit so it goes through just a small portion of that first layer of leather that's on the top here um, otherwise typically it would just be a top stitch so I wanted to see I wanted to try to protect that leather or the stitching as much as possible and so the stitches aren't completely inside the channeling but they're a little bit deeper into that channel than if I wasn't to have dropped that knife down they would have stuck out a fair fair amount and worn off quickly like the original ones did there and keep in mind the adhesive is supposed to hold it together very well and suede actually adheres very well so even if the stitches do get worn out the sole isn't exactly going to come off very easily but i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions or comments leave them down below i am going to go ahead and do a cash or trash episode on it which i'll leave in the link in the description below um, check us out also in the link tree page. It's got all our other links too to our Facebook, Instagram, and everything like that as well. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and share the video as well. Uh, it seems like uh, this brand does some interesting stuff for dance boots, but I can't quite figure out if they're still making the boots or what's going on exactly. But I'll try to see if I can figure it out for the Cash or Trash episode for you. So definitely check that out, and we'll see you next time.